We are the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be learning about only through textbooks and TV. Today, we're leaving the island of Oahu and flying to Hawaii. Now I know what you're thinking. If you're in Oahu now, aren't you already in Hawaii? Well, yes and no. Hawaii is part of Hawaii itself, but Hawaii itself isn't limited to just Hawaii. Does that make sense? We'll explain later. Let's get to the big island. We had no idea how easy it was to go from one island to another. We're leaving Oahu, going to Kona on Hawaiian Airlines, and we found these tickets for $44 each. We had to check two bags though, that's $25 each, but still really, really reasonable. And we also got 5% off through Inspirato. It's only a 40 minute flight. Did you see all the lava rock as we landed? I feel like the airport is like on all lava. This is the coolest airport ever. It is indoor, outdoor. There are no walls. The second we step off the plane though, to go to Stay Gecko, I don't, I don't know how I do it. I don't. Now that we have our luggage, we're just gonna wait for our Jeep to show up. We got a really good deal with Turo Jeeps, a friend of the family, and we're gonna have that for the entire time that we're on the island so that we can go explore in Hawaiian style. Brooklyn says she sees it. We're looking for a red Jeep. Oh, I see it. It's a stick shift, so only Phil's driving. I don't know how. It feels a lot warmer here than in Oahu. This entire area is covered in this lava rock. You can see, I mean, a lot of it, it actually looks like the lava flowed through here just in the past year. It looks like it just happened. We're almost to our house now, and after staying in hotels for a while, it's nice to finally be back in a proper Inspirado home from their portfolio. We've just gotta find our way through the little back streets here to get to it. Welcome to Ohia. That is our home for the next couple of nights. Right away we have this big old living room that opens up these La Cantina doors, make it go right to the outside where we have a pool. It's not huge, it looks bigger in pictures to be honest, and a pretty good sized hot tub. But I really love the grill and the big TV. So if we're gonna be eating dinner, we're probably gonna be doing it outside. And I hope we do get to do some grilling while we're here. We don't have an ocean view, but we have a beautiful view of the rolling hills over here, and I think that goes up to a, a volcano out there. And then the lava rock is 80,000 years old, and we're learning that the more broken up the lava rock is, the older it is. Let us show you the real kitchen. Colt's calling for us. Actually just caught a green old that eats these guys. You're welcome. <laughs> Cole is in heaven because we've been in a lot of hotels lately, so he doesn't have the opportunity to freely go out and catch lizards, and now he's catching hundreds already. All right, back to the kitchen. So I love this countertop. This is like supposed to be lava rock. I don't know if it's actually made from lava rock, but it's really pretty. And this is the bar area. Got all our glassware, our bar sink, a uh, wine fridge and ice maker. So I think we've got some cocktails in our future. When Phil's around, we always do. Dining table that seats eight and then four additional bar stools. Built-in refrigerator here. Lots of cabinetry. Oh, and Inspirato, when we stay at their homes, they usually have a snack or a drink or something special for us when we arrive and they stock the home with groceries before we get here. Super, super convenient. And the stove top is wolf, but it looks brand new. All the appliances seem pretty spanking new. Big oven here, we could have a feast, but I'd rather cook outside, to be honest. We're going back outside. This is the front door. So we have a, a nice little, would it be a lanai? Little garden, nice little garden here that goes from our garage. So you can either walk around or through the garage. But in the garage is something special. We have a matching red golf cart to go with our red Jeep. But this comes with our stay here and it seats six. So we're set if we wanna go anywhere within the Mauna Lanai property area. 
had to grab some chips from the Jeep, so let's get inside. We want to check out the bedrooms. Our niece and her boyfriend are actually staying with us this weekend, so they're going to be in this downstairs master. It's got its own ensuite bathroom, the linear closet, and these really pretty windows. So this is at the front of the house. King bed, lots of storage, all the luxuries you need. And the beds are so comfy. And we had passed a powder room here in the hallway, so this is what everyone would use on the main level. But let's go upstairs. So there is a laundry room, which is great. We love doing laundry on trips. Even if we're having a short trip and then we go back home, I wanna dry anything that's wet. If it's super dirty, you wanna clean before you leave. Okay, this is gonna be Colt's room. It has two twin beds, another ensuite, and then the linear closet. And it's also at the front of the house, so this one just has a higher up view from downstairs. And then this is gonna be Brooklyn's room. She also has the bathroom, the closet, king bed, and this balcony entrance. Goes all the way across and connects to the master up here, which we'll show you. And this master is great because you have the lava views and it's a walk-in closet, king bed. Beautiful. Oh yeah, ceiling fan, I just looked up. Always look up. Yeah, beautiful ceilings and uh, lovely breeze from the fan. I haven't even looked at the bathroom yet. Let's check it out. Ooh, so it has a nice big tub, separate shower, separate toilet area, and big vanity for two sinks. We've gotta go get our swimsuits on because we are jumping into action and we're starting off with my favorite activity that we have planned on this trip. I cannot wait, I am really excited about it. So let's get our suits on and get in the car. Getting dark out. We are having a nighttime adventure. In a little correction, turns out that the car is not manual, it's automatic. But I still don't wanna drive. It's so dark now, but we're getting in the water. We're heading out on a boat. No, I forgot my- Like a, like a my, ride that you My swimsuit is perfect. Oh my gosh, it is pitch black out there. You cannot even see where we're going, but we're getting ready to swim with some friends. We just can't see on our way to get there. We're getting ready to hop in. Let's see who we're gonna meet down there. That, all right, all right. We, oh, look at that ray. Oh my gosh. Amazing how big they were, too. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. I had no idea they were that big. When I was thinking manta rays, I was thinking like this big or so, but they were like six feet. They were huge, and I felt like they were gonna swallow us when they came up so close to us. That was like one of the coolest things we've done. That was awesome. But the plankton usually stay on the surface during the daytime and then at night they go down to the seafloor. So the light that they have on the boards tricks the plankton to coming up to the surface. And then of course, in addition, the, the mantas can see them and they're eating that plankton. And our guide that was in the water with us, she was calling them out by name. She says there's over 300 manta rays that are known by name out here. And it's because of their, their spots and their patterns that they have on their back are all really unique. So they can identify them just by looking at them. It was cool, but I, it's so cold. So Colt, what did you think when you first got in the water and you saw it for the first time? I'm terrified, let's get out. <laughs> That's true, at first he was like, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do this. But then it seems like you got used to it and then you got really into you know observing them and and watching them, they got so close to us, they would even like touch us, but you can't touch them. And if you notice, we have these floaties around our ankles, and that's so it keeps our legs uh, on the surface of the water, so our legs aren't dangling down and we accidentally hit the manta ray. 
That thing was on Colt's wetsuit, and that's the food that they're eating. It's plankton that turns into this fish-like thing. We were in the water for about a half an hour, but the whole thing went by in a flash. I feel like in an instant we were done. But that was so, so cool. Now we're gonna get some sleep. We're yeah. still on mainland times. Well, we may not have seen <laughs> whale sharks in Donsol, but this was a 100% win. I'll take it. Today's all about just making maximum use of this incredible Inspirato home. From letting the kids play in the pool and the hot tub. To making good use of this kitchen and preparing a home cooked meal. To putting this outdoor grill to good use. To pouring the perfect cocktails. To having dinner with family on vacation. And this is my niece, Darby, and her boyfriend, Rainier. And they're the ones who gave us all of the suggestions for our food tour episode in Oahu. If you haven't seen that episode, check it out right here. Darby has been living on the island of Oahu with her sister, my other niece, Micah, for what, a couple of years now? One year? Micah's been there for two. Two years, <laughs> okay. So they know all the good stuff and that's why we hit all of the good places. And Rainier's been out here so much too and they're both very adventurous eaters and that's why they're able to find all the really cool places that we enjoyed in that episode. Traveling is great, but traveling Traveling and family, even better. We're leaving our villa. We're gonna pile in the Jeep and head two hours south and look for a secret beach. All right, guys, let's get in. We're following my niece Darby and her boyfriend Rainier, and that's them in the Jeep in front of us. We're gonna roughly try to follow them, but we'll have our map so that if we get separated, we're not gonna be lost. It is a beautiful day. We woke up and there's a lot of overcast and I looked at the, the weather forecast and it was gonna be cloudy, but it always seems to work out for us. We never worry about the weather. We just get in the car, we jump and we go, um, and it always seems to work out. Remember the last trip we were on? The, the, the whale sharks. She's right, the whale sharks in Donsol, Philippines did not work out, but we still had a great time. I guess my point is, is always have an open mind, always have a good attitude, roll with the punches, and it's gonna work out. In the end, it always does. We are getting very close, I think just maybe another couple of miles here, and the views are just killer. And what did I tell you? The weather is perfect. We're all loaded up with our sunblock, got some granola, some water, packed up. We even have our drone. But our journey there is just beginning. It is a two mile hike to the beach. Woohoo! People at the trailhead just told us that we're wrong. It's actually 2.8 miles in, much closer to three than the two I said. And it might take us up to two hours to get there. I'm glad we packed our granola bars in our water. Somebody in a Jeep just passed us. Turns out you don't have to hike this, you can actually drive it. And since we've got these awesome Jeeps, we figured we might as well do that, especially because I'm a little worried about Brooklyn making it on a multi-hour hike through these conditions wearing nothing but her awesome Crocs. So I'm gonna go back here and pick up our Jeep and we're gonna drive it instead. Okay, now this is gonna be an adventure. Actually, some of the people at the trailhead said it can get pretty technical. I used to do off-roading, so as long as it's not stuff that's gonna get us stuck in mud, I'm not too concerned. And now we got part of the top off, so we're really off-roading. So happy we got this Jeep. I don't even know if I've said what beach we're going to. We're going to Papalokia Beach. It also has a different name that I'll tell you about when we see it. <laughs> this is really off-roading. Now where? Left or right? We're going right. Hopefully it's the right way to go. <laughs> you literally just like made the entire tunnel thingy mud. We weren't expecting that. There was a big puddle of mud and uh, it went way up in the air and we're all muddy now. Instead of two hours, it took us a very adventurous 25 minutes, but we made it. It's so cool. And it's like greenish too. It's like my my favorite shades of green. Papa Colea Beach. It's also known as Green Sand Beach. Not so secret, huh? Woo! I'm good. This is one of four green sand beaches in the world. The other three are in Norway, Galapagos, and Guam. But we are in the center of the cone of a volcano right now. This volcano formed 49,000 years ago and its last major eruption, it had erosion afterwards that collapsed into the sea and opened up to create this little bay here. 
It's a color green because from its last eruption that magma had a mineral in it called olivine. And so eventually with the erosion and breaking up, it, it shows you the green sand, but it's also known as Hawaiian diamonds. It's mixed in with some lava sand, but it's about the color of maybe a sage green. Another really cool fact about this particular place is that we are standing right next to the southernmost point in the 50 states of the U.S. A lot of people think it's actually in Key West, Florida, but that's just the continental U.S. If you count Alaska and Hawaii, it's right here over my shoulder. But we still have a lot of other places we want to explore today, so we're going to pack it up and head back out. We needed to stop for lunch and we are so lucky that Ka'alua's Super J's is on our way. This building might look a little bit modest, but the food is supposed to be anything but. Top 100 restaurants in the US and Sunny Anderson had it on the best thing I ever ate. And that's the Lahu Lahu that we have to try too. Thanks buddy. You're welcome. Lau Lau is pork covered in taro leaves and then it's cooked in an emu which is an underground oven and covered with banana leaves. Okay, and then she says it's good when you smash it into the rice. Mm. So salty, so juicy, it's delicious. Sunny Anderson is right. This is so good. We tried to make our own pork this way. Not as good as this by a long shot. I got something a little bit different. It's Kahlua pork with cabbage. You can see stewed also. I believe it's cooked in the same way, just not inside of the taro leaves. Oh, look at that huge chunk. It's dripping with broth. That's really good. You would expect the pork to be fantastic, but you get so much of the cabbage taste in there. That's unexpected. It's really good. Tender, tender, tender. And some of the sides, besides the white rice, I got the macaroni salad, cold macaroni salad. Oh. Legit macaroni salad. Huh? That really is. It's got, I see peas, but it's mostly the spices. Oh, it's like a seasoning salt. So good. That's good. Is that the pork that's cooked underground? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so here's good. Like it? Mm -hmm. What do you like better, the Kalua pig or the Lao Lao? The Lao Lao is incredible. You're absolutely right. That's 10 times better than the one we made. The macaroni shell is my favorite. We got pretty lucky getting seats. The restaurant is pretty small, so a lot of people just get it to go and eat in the car, or they can order the la'u la'u and take it home. They can also sell frozen la'u la'u, so you can eat it later. But it is family owned and it opened in 1991, so it's been around for a while, still going strong. Mm. So glad that this worked out. It would be such a shame to miss this place coming to the big island, but it's a big island and everything can be pretty spread out. So we're super, super lucky this worked out. Another great perk that comes along with this Inspirado house is free use of the local beach club. Also, the golf cart. So we're gonna grab that from the garage and head down to the beach club. Oh my. This is definitely the nicest golf cart we've ever had at any of the Inspirado homes. It's brand spanking new. It's just down the road, probably a one minute drive. This is the Monolani Beach Club. The waters are calm, so perfect for swimming, really great for families, and the snorkeling is really excellent over here. You can see a ton of people out in the water right now, but- oh, they yeah. I'm just your local annoyinger. That checks out actually. They have a full service restaurant, but I think the perfect thing to do right now is have a cocktail while the sun goes down. While you guys are getting a cocktail, I'm gonna get in the water. That was a lot. I'm gonna go run in the grass. Sorry, I forgot what that was. Isn't that fun? <laughs> the Empress Drop. Basically a gin lemon drop martini made with Empress Gin for the cool colors. It goes from purple to, to pink with the lemon juice. That's good. Even though there's sugar in that, it is not too sweet. That's perfectly balanced. I love it. And I got the Ali Ita, which means royalty, and it's their top shelf Mai Tai. So I bet it has a bunch of mana, which means power. We're learning so many Hawaiian words on this trip. I love it. Oh, that is a yummy Mai Tai. I always crave Mai Tais when we're in a tropical destination. Sun's going down, so now we have to find our kids and go. <laughs> While we were having cocktails, the kids started a little game of tag. It's adorable. <laughs> it's pretty out. Okay, 
A quick education on Hawaii and this island in particular. Now, let's see how well Colt remembers the school stuff he was just studying about Hawaii. How were these islands formed? Volcanoes erupting and all the lava rock building up into a bunch of different islands. Excellent. Good job. 100%. Nice. Okay, you can go now. You can have candy. Thank you. And the first Hawaiian island didn't start to appear above the surface of the Pacific Ocean until about 5 million years ago. Now, the youngest of all of those islands is this one. It's part of the state of Hawaii, but the name of the island is also Hawaii. Obviously that can cause a lot of confusion, and that's the main reason that a lot of people, because this island is more than twice as big as every other Hawaiian island combined, just refer to this one as the Big Island. The Big Island has four active volcanoes today. And on this island, between the years of 1912 and 2012, so that 100 year period, over 60 eruptions from these volcanoes. There's a big volcano right behind me, which you can't see currently because of the cloud cover, but that one is Mauna Kea. It's actually the tallest mountain in the world if you measure it from its base on the sea floor. That would make it about 1,400 meters taller than Mount Everest. Wait a minute, what? I didn't know that either, but it makes sense because on a clear day, you can tell that there's snow up there. Snow in Hawaii. That one over there is Mauna Loa, which is also an active volcano, but I should clarify, for a volcano to be considered active, it just means it has to have erupted at least once in the past 10,000 years. Now, seismic activity here does seem to indicate that another eruption is very possible from that volcano within the next 1,000 years. Mauna Loa has erupted at least 33 times in the past 180 years, with the most recent time being just last year in 2022. And then over on this side, also behind clouds right now, is Walalai, which is another active volcano on the Big Island. And just beyond Mauna Loa is Kilauea, which is the most active volcano on the planet. And it erupted continuously for over 35 years between 1983 and 2018. If you've ever seen any footage on a television show or in film of a Hawaiian volcano eruption, chances are almost certain that was the volcano. We were really hoping to get a glimpse of it ourselves by hiking up that way, but it turns out that the summit eruption of Kilauea paused on March 7th, 2023, literally three weeks before we got here. We've spent four nights in this home and we're so grateful that our niece was able to join us. Vacations are always more fun when people you love are with you. But we're heading out of the house and we're not leaving the island yet. A lot of the flights headed back to the States are gonna be evening flights, red eye flights. So we have the rest of the day to enjoy the beach and fun and we're gonna check out another beach club. That's gonna wrap it up for this episode, but after getting a real flavor for all of the Japanese influence here, we're headed over to experience the real thing. We're heading to Japan. And we're gonna meet back up with our besties, so we can't wait to get there. But we'll be back because we just booked Maui for a few weeks out. For now, we're gonna grab a couple of Mai Tais over here at Lava Lava and make specific plans for each one of these trips. Hopefully you subscribe, follow us along. We're the Lockwoods, Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn, and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people. It's only a 40. This is some pretty old lava. There's a step there. Watch the step. <laughs> I'm good. Even like touch us, but you can't touch them. It's like a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> this is Big Fat Chungus Boy. Mm -hmm. No. No. No, I'm sorry. Um, I would have jumped too.